has done. Now, if you laid your burdens down, if you turn it over to Jesus, you can say glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Because he's got it in all control. He got it under control. St. Paul, he got it under control. You can praise God today. You ain't got to wait for Thursday. You ain't got to wait for Thursday. You be thankful right now. Glory, glory. what I'm talking about. We want to thank you all for joining in with us in our devotion this Sunday morning. And we pray that you will continue to pray for those that are sick, hospitalized, and those that are in nursing homes. Thank you all. Now at this moment we'll turn this part of the program over to the pulpit. Amen.
great reminder this morning that with God we can get through anything. The Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. So glad that you are here for worship this morning. I'm going to invite you to stand all over the building as one of our associate ministers comes and gives us and leads us in our responsive reading. Good morning, St. Paul. Amen. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew 28, and we're going to begin our reading at the 16th verse. Matthew 28 and 16, you know how we do it. I read the first verse, you come with the second verse, and then we'll finish off with the 20th verse together. Amen? Amen. Are we ready? Amen. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Twenty teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Let us remain standing and join hands for our model prayer.
Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My name is Brother Neville Green. And I stand before you to welcome our visitors and you, our St. Paul family. Our pastor and our executive pastor has been teaching us and leading us in to why I love my church. And I want to share just a couple of things on why I love my church. I love my church because it's a, it's a, pla it's a place that I am loved no matter what. Amen. Through struggles, through trials, happiness, and celebrations. And last but not least, I love my church because the executive pastor, Jasper Taylor, and Dr. Joel D. Taylor preaches the uncompromising word of God. I just said something profound. The uncompromising word of God. Again, to our visitors and to our, you, our St. Paul family, we are very grateful that you decided to stop by to worship with us today. Later on in the service, my pastor will open up the doors to the church. We ask that you give God your heart and the man of God your hand. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Neville, for that warm welcome. Uh, we certainly have many reasons why we love our church. and Just now you've heard his reasons. Uh, I'm grateful for a church that during a season like this, season of Thanksgiving, we have been acting as the church. And last week our church has given out baskets and given food out to this community. That's one of the reasons why I love this church. Focusing on those least lost, lost and left out. Amen. Amen. As we customarily do each Sunday, if you've invited somebody to church, I'm going to ask that you would stand. This week, if you've invited somebody to church, please stand. Praise God. If you received a response from your efforts this week, remain standing. Remain standing. All right, Brother James. All right. All right. Praise God. God bless you, my brother. Glad you're here today. Amen. Amen. My sister. Good morning. Amen. Just wave your hands at us today. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, sister, for putting out that call to your family. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Sister and granddaughter. Amen. Amen. Wave your hand so I know who you are. Amen. Good to see you today. Bless you. Praise God. My young sister in the balcony. Brought your best friend. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. Brother Beatty. Co-worker, bless you, man. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for worshiping with us. Amen, amen. Anybody else? All right. Nieces, amen. Good to see you today. Bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us. Amen. Am I missing anybody? All right, Brother Neville. Pastor Taylor, I got my best girlfriend here. And my mother, when I traveled to um, San Antonio, this is my best friend. We went down there together, and I came back as a chicken, but she stayed on. <laughs> she's traveled several other uh, states, and now she's back home. And she reached out to me this week and said, I want to come to church with you. And I was like, yeah, come on and come. Praise she God. My mom was going to come, so I'm glad to see him. Today. Amen. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. Is that everybody? Is that everybody? Where? In the corner. Balcony? I don't think she had a visitor. It's all right. Bless you today. Amen. Well, we certainly have a wealth of visitors here today. Let's do what St. Paul do, do and uh, let's show love to one another today. Stand and find somebody that you don't know. Tell them that you love them with the love of Jesus. Hey, 
how are you? Bless you today. Stand to your feet. We're in a season of thanksgiving, thanking God for all that He's done and all that He's going to do. Instead of looking at your neighbor, just look to the Lord and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for smiling on me. Let's sing today. Oh, God has smiled. God has. Yes, He has. If you take the time to think about it, you realize that God, He smiled on you. Has He been good to you? Let's make it personal today. See, God has, yes, He has. He has set me free. Yes, He has. Lift your hands and say the Lord has been good. 
Lift your hands and say the Lord has been good. Has he made a way? Has the Lord opened doors for you? Has he changed your life? Anybody know that they know that they know that they know that the Lord has been good? Yes, he has. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. season of thanksgiving and it's amazing our nation recognizes thanksgiving for a different reason but as the people of God we have a special reason to be thankful and that is the fact that we know that everything that we have everything that we are it's because of the Lord turn to somebody to say it wasn't you not because you were so cute. Not because you had enough money. But it's by the grace of God. The unmerited favor of God. That's why we're thankful today. God, we thank you. We thank you. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, for what you have done in our lives. And yes, people all over this world will gather together on Thursday this week and they're going to be saying thank you for all the things that has happened in our life. But we know everything that has happened in our life, it's been because of you. And for that, we say thank you. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Sometimes we don't even deserve what you do. But, but in response, we just simply say thank you, Jesus, for what you've done on my behalf. I thank you for this church and I thank you for these, your people. My prayer, God, is that you will continue to bless them. And you will continue to have your way in your life by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself in a fresh and an exciting way. Thank you, God. This Lord is our prayer and our plea. Everybody who greets, said amen. Say amen. Amen. Just get something on your mind that you're thankful for. As we continue in worship. Make it personal today. Me out. 
out, you brought me out, you brought me out. Oh, thank you, Lord, for bringing us out today, God. You brought us out. Somebody needs to get this out today. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your voice. Thank you, Lord. I just want to pray. I just want to thank you, Lord. Just turn to somebody and say, I'm grateful today for the big and the small. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of a thankworthy God.
Moy St. Paul. These are your announcements. This afternoon at 3.30 p.m., we will fellowship with the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church, located at 7848 South Norman, where the Dr. O.T. Moses is pastor. All announcements for next Sunday, November 30th, are due today. Isaac, the pastor, will be preaching Tuesday, November 25th at 7 p.m. at the New Covenant Missionary Baptist Church, located at 754 East 77 Street, where Rev, uh, Reverend Stephen J. Thurston is pastor. Amen. On Wednesday, November 26 at 7 p.m., the Thanksgiving Eve worship will be held at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, located at 6953 South Stewart, where the Reverend C. E. Barnes III is pastor. Attention, teachers training classes for Sunday school teachers has begun. All individuals that did not complete the previous training will be automatically enrolled, as well as the president TNTs or teachers and training. And any other prospective teachers will meet December 5th, the 13th, the 20th, and the 27th from 10 to noon in the lower basement area. We want to grow our teaching staff and we need you. Christmas rehearsal are as the following, Saturday at noon, December 6th, December 13th, and the final on the 20th. Parents, please bring your children on time. Want to know who did what, why, and when? Mark your calendars now for December 10th at 7 p.m. to hear all presidents, vice presidents, end of the year report, and statistic plans in addition, we will hear from the senior and executive pastors who give our church annual report. Presidents and vice presidents, bring the info. Members be present to hear what we have accomplished for this year, as well as witness who received the St. Paul Leadership Award. In observance of Thanksgiving, the office will be closed Wednesday through Friday. Happy Thanksgiving to us all. Amen. Our hospitalized members is Brother Ray Jackson, Sister Audrey McFarland, and Sister Ray Barker. And added to the common lasting list is Sister Kimberly Matthew. Her number is 773-785-1926. And the church will also like to acknowledge a thank you card from Sister Hughes. St. Paul, this concludes this week's announcement. It is our prayer that you will comply. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Lacey. Uh, I'm going to ask that our deacons will prepare for our Miriam liturgical dancers as they will come in just a few moments here. Um, but in the meantime, I want to remind you that this afternoon we're headed to Mount Hermon, 3.30 p.m., celebrating with Dr. Moses and their church. Uh, we'll be in our annual Thanksgiving Eve service this Wednesday at 7 p.m. at Antioch, and it's not listed here, but uh, this Wednesday is casual, Christian casual. That's the attire for this Wednesday evening. Amen? Amen. Amen. We want to say thank you to our junior women and our SWAT ministry. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Um, all year long, every month, they make an extra effort to make sure St. Paul Baptist Church has a community presence. Amen. Together they work feeding the hungry and giving clothes to those who need it as well. Amen. They did something extra special this month. On last Saturday, uh, they invited many of the people that they have built relationships with uh, in this community, and they invited them to come for an extra special Thanksgiving dinner. And I was so pleased to, to observe Reverend Milton Houston and all of the people that make up those two teams. They did an excellent job. 
Amen. And I've been just encouraged. I saw some of the same faces that were there on that Saturday show up at our church on Sunday. And they've been coming throughout the year. So once again, we want to say thank you to them for setting the standard of what it means to be the church in the community. Amen. Amen. We want to remind you that uh, next Sunday is fifth Sunday. Men and Women's Day Choir is asked to sing. As well as our deacon wives will lead us in devotion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Uh, Our whole church, we are getting ready for December 10th. Everybody say December 10th. 10th. It's a big night in the life of our church as we celebrate uh, all the the good that has happened this year in our church. Uh, We're going to thank God for... Uh, all, all the positive things that has happened uh, this year. We're going to hear from all of our leaders. Amen. Amen. This may be a little bit different than the way we've done it in the past, but sometimes change is good. Amen. Amen. And hopefully you've been working all this year towards your goals, ministries, and leaders, and we're excited to hear from you all on that Wednesday night. I wanted to make it very clear right now, we're not looking for a 10-minute presentation We don't need a PowerPoint. We don't need a whole bunch of rigmarole. We just need to know what you said you were going to do and what you did. Amen. Amen. So I might have to pull the funeral card and say three minutes, please. Amen. 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 All right. Doesn't have to be elaborate. But especially we're going to, you're going to have opportunity to see who receives our St. Paul Leadership Award. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes you hear where we are trying to focus on our weaknesses, but sometimes we don't highlight our strengths. Those that are doing what is asked of them, those who are supporting in the way that we ask. And so we want to take special time to celebrate those who are strong leaders in the life of our church. Amen. 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 These are all of our announcements. Uh, At this time, we're going to have the Miriam liturgical dancers coming. Just give- 
God say amen. 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 Why don't you say it like you really mean it today? Uh, what a joy it is to be in this place today. Uh, God is blessing us right now. Um, let me just thank God for the weather spoons again for last week. Amen, amen, and I want to, I've been worried about Jasper and Milton up here today, because Homeward Flossmoor whooped up on Simeon last night, and, uh, and I, see, I see you, Joe, uh-huh. yeah, amen, praise the Lord, God is good, uh, I want to encourage you to meet me this evening at our son's church, we want to go in great numbers. And I'm looking for you, 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 and even you this evening. Uh, let me again thank you all for this week supporting Jasper on Wednesday night. Amen, amen. Uh, uh, he's busy again this week. Amen. And uh, back to the future revival, a generational revival. Rev. Moses Gordon's son is coming from New Orleans on Monday and Jasper's preaching on Tuesday night. Amen. Amen. Boy, and all my friends calling for him and they ain't calling for me. The old gray mule ain't what it used to be. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm excited about the Lord. I want to, even to those that are viewing us online, we had over 50 people from different states viewing us last week. Uh, we want to thank you for viewing us and pray that you continue to view us. And if you want to invest in this ministry, click on it and you can give a gift today. Amen. Amen. Uh, God is so good as you turn to Matthew chapter number 7. Uh, I am praying that everyone would come to this planning session. Amen. 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 I'm even, I even have a job next year for the mother's board. Amen. 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 I'm even get y'all a secretary to help you. Sister Marie is going to help the mothers next year. Amen. 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 See, I may be putting her on the mother's board. Amen. Amen. That's what my friend Reverend Raphael did. He put a young lady on there to help the mothers. Amen. To watch over them. And I think Marie's going to take care of the mother's board for the pastor. Amen. Amen. I'm going to put some of these millennium children to work. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Again, thank everyone for uh, Men and Women's Day. Thank everyone. I love everybody. If I offended any member of this church this year, I want you to know I'm sorry. Uh, but I am going to preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read uh, verse 1. You read verse 2. We're going down through verse 5. Matthew chapter number 7. Amen. Y'all look good in black. Black is pretty, ain't it? Amen. My, 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 my. I read verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. You read verse 2. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye? Together, thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat. I want to talk for a few moments about what's in your eye. Uh, look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor that question. Say, neighbor, what's in your eye? 
I begin this message with a footnote. For I'm fully aware that this is a saying of Christ, that this saying of Christ is a precept honored even by profession Christians. Often when they are messing up, or should I say sinning. When folks are doing wrong and they get caught, they're quick to use these words, don't judge me. When they are falling short of the mark, people will be quick and bold to tell others that they are looking, thinking, and talking about, do not judge me. I want to begin this message by suggesting that we must be cognizant that Christians or believers are not to avoid all judging. For Christians need to judge themselves and do according to the word of God. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. And ain't nobody got to judge you for wrong. Amen, lights. So often we take this passage out of context. For the Lord is not warning us to discern truth from error. Further, the Lord does not oppose correction. But only offering correction in the right spirit. Amen. I recall us, well, I'm not going to tell that story. This passage is looking at the restrict, hypocritical correction of others rather than prohibiting all helpful correction. Love dictates that you try to help people when they're doing wrong, when they're going wrong, and when they're living wrong. Bottom line is we say don't judge me. The problem is, is God's going to judge you. And he's going to judge you according to his word. Amen. It don't matter how pretty you are, who you think you are. If you're not living according to the word of God, you're going to have to deal with it with God. Matter of fact, Moses said your sins will find you out. And so you just don't throw it. Don't judge me. If you're wrong, you're wrong. I remember a story of a pastor in a member of the church came to the office and said, Reverend, Reverend, I'm pregnant. And she was crying. Ah, I didn't mess up. I didn't mess up. I didn't mess up. And the pastor said, what you crying for? That ain't the first baby you had. That ain't the first time you had sex. You know what you was doing. Y'all catch. I ain't going to tell y'all who the preacher was, but y'all know him real good. I'm just keeping it real, church. I'm aware today that it's easy to say things we should not say, know what we don't understand. We must be cognizant today the complexity of our lives and also of others whom we only get a glimpse of each and every day. Yeah. Human nature allows us to pay attention to the faults and failures of others rather than looking in the mirror and seeing our own shortcomings. We can, if we're really today honest, we can evaluate others on the basis of our own conceived ideals of our own greatness and righteousness and never look through the same lens we look at others in their daily activities. Most people are quick to criticize other people and they really do not have the complete picture nor do they understand the situation. Have you ever heard someone say, don't judge me? There are three things this text is telling us. 
The first thing it's telling us is judge not. Look at your neighbor and say judge not. The word says do not judge. The word judge in this passage means to criticize, condemn, judge, or censor. It's fault finding. Or should I say being picky. It's the habit of censorship or carping criticism. The verb judge used here by Jesus does not refer to legislation in court of law which is necessary in our society. Amen. Nor is the Lord suggesting that we have suspension of our critical faculties. But it imposes the exercise of harsh censorship in our survey and motives and actions of others. The Lord is warning us sternly against the practice of ill-natured criticism of hasty half-formed opinions, the open and unconscious assertion of our own superiority, the ideal of accepting malicious, unfounded gossip, the crude sneer that we give to other people, which we do so much harm's relation in everyday life. The present imperative suggests that is the habit of judging others that is condemned. Some people, all they do is judge people. And they don't never look at their own lives. Come on, talk to me, somebody. They, that's all they do. They talk about people all the time. They criticize people all the time. They may be doing the very best they can do. My mama say they didn't raise themselves. So many of us, that's all we do. We sit in the corner like the Pharisees and we look down on people. Lord, help me preach this morning. Give me some Holy Ghost power. Many of us are always in other folks' business. Cut somebody say, folks always in other folks' business. If I was preaching enough, I would say you need to try to handle your own business and try to get your own business fixed. If you spend more time with your business, you'll be doing a lot better yourself. You in somebody else's house trying to clean their house up and your house stank. The word of God here is indicating unfavorable judgment. The Lord is telling his disciples to avoid censorshipness, to avoid prejudgment, to avoid prejudice, to refrain from stereotyping. In 1884, a young man died, and after the funeral, his grieving parents decided to establish a memorial for him. With that in mind, they met with Charles Elliott, the president of Harvard University. Elliott received this unpretentious couple into his office and asked what could he do. After they exercised their desire to fund a memorial, Elliot impatiently said, perhaps you have in mind a scholarship. No, they said, we're thinking of something more substantial that may be a building. The woman replied in a patronizing tone, Elliot brushed aside the idea as being too expensive and the couple departed. The next year, Elliot, the president of Harvard, learned that this couple had gone elsewhere and establish a $26 million memorial named the Leland Stanford Junior University, better known as Stanford University today. Sometimes we look at people and we judge them the wrong way. Oh, I remember I was dreaming in a car dealership one day and the salesman told me about an incident with the owner of Kenny's Ribs. He went in there looking in his blue jeans with his broken Mississippi English and said, I want this car. 
and they didn't want him to drive the car and look at the car and he went to the president of the company and gave him his car and said call my banker right now and they called the bank and he said he can buy your dealership I wish I had a witness up in here sometimes we look at people and we really don't know what we're looking at We look down on people. You don't know the hell they've been through just to get here today. You don't know what. Do not live your life with a single-minded commitment just to find fault in people. Everybody got some faults up in here today. Yeah, you with your fine self. Your hair out of place. You better look in the mirror. I'm just joking, y'all. The Lord is warning us against unloving, condemning of other people. Only God can judge. And please don't take the role of Jehovah. But the problem is, you need to remember that God's looking behind all of this fluff you got. He's looking behind all of it. And he knows. He know what you're doing. He know where you're going. He know where you're doing wrong. And you really don't want to box with God. So don't try to justify yourself with your wrongdoing. God knows what you're doing. I wish I had one witness here. Second thing, this text is suggesting to us that judgment comes around. A person that judges other people will also be judged. Did you hear what I said? What you put out is going to come back. God has a divine boomerang that whatever you dish out will come back. Verse 2 says, for the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. In other words, if you're judging folks, somebody looking at you the same way. If you saying what's wrong with them, Somebody looking at you and say, what's wrong with her? Yeah. Same way you look at the actions of other people. People are looking at you. And in the end, the Lord's going to judge you. The same way you judge other people. Well, they ought to know right from wrong. You're supposed to know right from wrong too. I ain't got no help up in here. In this little book, The Illustrations of Bible Truth, H.A. Ironside pointed out the folly of judging others. He related an incident in the life of a man by the name of Bishop Potter. He was sailing from Europe on one of those great transatlantic ocean liners. When he went on board, he found out a passenger that he had to share the cabin with. After going to see the accommodations, he came to the person's desk and inquired if he could leave his gold watch and other valuables in the ship's safe. He explained that ordinarily he wouldn't avail himself to that privilege, but he had been in his cabin and he had met a man who was occupying the cabin with him. Judging from his appearance, he said, I'm afraid that he might not be a trustworthy person. The person accepted his valuables and remarked, it's all right, Bishop Potter. I'm glad I'll to be taking care of your fine jury. But he said, the other man has already been here. And he's put his watch and his valuables in the safe because he said, you don't look like he can trust you. 
Come on, help to me somebody. What I'm trying to get us to see, you looking at other people and they looking at you the same way. Come on, talk to me. You saying they're ugly, they saying you uglier. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me today. Must treat others the way we want to be treated. And God will judge harshly in those last days how you judge others. Jesus declares that God will judge a person with the same severity that a person uses to judge others. I hope you all are getting this in our study. I am a church member. This is part of church five, chapter number five, about how we try to judge people in the church. And the last thing that this text is saying to me today is that you need to judge yourself. Look at your neighbors, a hey neighbor. You need to judge yourself. Tell your neighbor, you need to get in the mirror and look at yourself real good. You know, I always am amazed at funeral programs because they go get a picture and put on the cover and the picture don't look nothing like them. They go back 30, 40 years when they were 36, 24, 36 and now they're a three liter bottle. Come on, talk to me. And I'm looking, I say, who is this? Somebody need to judge themselves. These words of the Savior, no doubt, he was thinking of the Pharisees, and we've got a lot of them around this church today, who make themselves righteous at the expense of others. Not realizing their own spiritual faults. Jesus gives you an illustration to consider. Your primary concern should be your own shortcomings. Y'all hear me? Your primary number one concern should be you. And y'all need to stop lying telling me Reverend helped them. No, all of us need some help. You helping them, preacher. We all need help. There ain't nobody in here perfect. I want y'all to know I'm not perfect. And I ain't never told y'all I was perfect. I got a lot of faults. So pray for me. Amen. But I'm glad my boat is full of other folks. <laughs> they got faults just like me. I know I'm an angry black man. Amen, like. You, your primary concern needs to be to work on yourself. Many of us always talking about people and we didn't messed up so bad and everybody messed up. And when they walk away from who's she talking to? I remember her and what she did. I wish I had a witness in here. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and don't pay attention to the plank that's in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you got a plank in your own eye? A mold is a speck of straw, a shaft, a splinter of wood. 
And a beam is, is a log or a plank. It's like somebody having sawdust in their eye and you got a two by four in your eye. Talk to me somebody. The illustration is exaggerated by Christ to show the ludicrous position of one who sets themselves up to judge others. Such a person is termed hypocrite. For he pretends to act as a physician when he sick himself. Have I got a witness in here? And all too often we condemn in others. And we don't never look at our own weakness in our own lives. So often we point to the speck of sawdust in others' eyes and we messed up on every side. We're quick to look at others' shortcoming and failure, but never want to look in the mirror and what we're doing. Amen. Amen. Uh, Reverend McDonald was teaching this week at Snurley Simpson's church, and a girl got pregnant in the church, and uh, this old lady just went off on her. And he said, but the woman forgot they sent her up north when she got pregnant down south herself. Come on, holler at me somebody right through there. Lord, it's a shame. They shacking. Mm, Reverend, they shacking. But you got babies from different men. And you ain't never been married to one of them? Help me somebody. Reverend, it's a shame about her drinking. But before you got on that medicine, you open up the bar and you close out the bar. It's a shame they went to jail. But how many laws have you broken and you just didn't get caught? We try to put guilt on other people. And we just as raggedy. We just as nasty. We just as filthy. Well, I ain't never had no baby. Well, how many damn abortions you didn't have? babies you didn't kill help me Holy Ghost I'm sorry I'm tired of this mess around here we always point our finger at people I know I'm preaching today I'm, I'm going to preach this the way the Lord gives it to me Well, it's a shame, it's a shame, Reverend. It's a shame, it's a shame. You got them sissies up in the church and, and you the biggest homemonger in the world. You got five children and you ain't taking care of one of them. And you gonna talk about somebody else? Come on, holler at me, somebody. talking about him because he's married and left the other woman but you got a man on Monday you got a different man on Tuesday you got another man on Wednesday you got another man on Thursday and you're with a woman on Friday come on holler at me somebody you like it both ways I ain't got no help up in here today A lot of us ain't just, we just ain't been caught. I wish I had somebody up in here. I'm glad my parents taught me don't look down on nobody. If it wasn't for the grace of God, where would I be right now? I know I was a booger bear. I know I was a booger bear.
I know I was a booger bear. If y'all don't know it, I'm telling y'all I was a booger bear. I used to keep a cooler Budweiser in my truck at 18 years old. Help me somebody. I always been, hey, hey, hey. What about you? What about you? Have you looked in the mirror? Have you looked at your life? Have you looked at your house? Have you looked at your crazy children? You talking about other people's children and your children just as crazy as crazy can be? And you got the nerve and audacity to talk about the children around this church? What are your child that they ain't even in church? Shame on you, you booger boy, you. You ought to come on, get clean today. Touch your neighbor and say, it's time to get this stuff clean up in here. And we try to look at people that we think are important. Anybody can take a Sunday morning bath and shower and go to the cleaners and get a suit. Anybody can comb their hair and spray on some Chanel number five and look holy for two hours on Sunday. But what were you doing all week long? I wish I had one witness in this house. I wish I had somebody would help me today. I wish I had somebody that would really help me today. I ain't gonna never forget and she didn't move to St. Louis now. She ain't never said nothing to me. When I was in the park on 87, right past Damon, the fourth preserve, and I was kicking it out there with the D family, and I had a half a paint of Jack Daniels in my hand, and Sister Harper rode up, and I still, she ain't never said nothing to me about it to this day. I was hiding, and I don't know if she saw it, but she asked me a thousand questions. Come on, help me somebody. Come on, help me somebody. Anybody a sinner up in here saved by grace like your pastor? Tell your neighbor, I ain't nothing but a sinner. Saved by grace. And some of you old folks up in here, y'all used to be young. I didn't want to go here, but I'm going down this street. Some of y'all old folks up in here, I didn't want to go here, but if walls could talk, and the same thing you criticizing your son and daughter about, what were you doing? I know you're old and you're chasing a car and you can't do nothing if you catch it now. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I know you're old and your medicine didn't mess you up, make you sleep a lot. But if if we could turn back the hands of time, I wish I had a witness. If we could just turn them back, turn them back, turn them back, turn them back. Yeah, you. That was you sleeping with that man's husband. Yeah. Uh huh. That was you smoking that roof in high school. That that was you. Uh huh. Uh huh. That was you up under the bleachers at the football game. Yeah, her showing your body parts. I wish I had a witness in here. I'm through. I done said enough. I ain't gonna say nothing now. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. Look at somebody, tell them, clean it up. We quit the fight for in other people. But we need to straighten out our own lives. So many of us, we just too sick to do anything wrong and we need to start praying for people for the Lord is able to straighten us out we find enough fault in other people but I dare you to look in the mirror and start looking at your own life 
Have I got a witness in the end? When you point a finger at somebody else, you get three fingers and a thumb pointing back at you. We're so quick to condemn people and we can become vocal in our criticism and at the same time, we feel we have an exempt clause like ain't nothing wrong with us. But I want to let y'all know that every member of St. Paul got something wrong with them. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. Everybody up in St. Paul has something wrong with them. You're not perfect and you're not complete. And the Lord is not through with you yet. Can you give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, the Lord is not through with you yet. I'm glad today that Jesus met a woman who had been caught in adultery. Have I got a witness in here? And the men had gathered stones and drug her out the city and got ready to stone her to death. And Jesus said, he that's without sin cast the first stone. I wonder if there's anybody in that crowd who had been sleeping with the woman themselves and they just hadn't got caught. The Bible says that everybody dropped their stones and went away. You ought to put your stone down. You need to get in your own eye and you need to clean it up. There's only one person who's without sin and his name is Jesus. They lied on him. They talked about him. They mistreated him. They called him everything but a child of God. They called him a friend of sinners because he hung out with rabbis, thieves, and vagabonds. But the good news today is he was without sin. Anybody glad? Jesus was without sin. The Bible says they took him to Calvary. He hung, bled, and died. Blood came streaming down. I'm so glad Jesus died. The reason Joe glad is because he washing me. Anybody glad? Why folks trying to condemn me? The Lord's trying to clean me. Give your neighbor a high five and find you somebody who you know been looking at you funny and say, neighbor, why folks been talking about me? The Lord been working on me. Why folks been criticizing me? The Lord been cleaning me. I wish I had a witness in here. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Is there anybody here thankful for the blood? I need some help right here. Is there anybody here thankful for the blood? There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath the flow lose all their guilt and all their stain. Anybody glad he shed his blood for you? Anybody glad? That's enough here now. Anybody glad he shed his blood for you? I wish somebody would take a neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, y'all ain't saying, say, neighbor, the Lord took my black body, dipped it in red blood, and I came out white as snow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm glad, I said I'm glad that I got players, I'm glad that I have pimps, punks and prostitutes, I'm glad that I got people that ain't perfect around here, the reason why I'm glad 
if the Lord is working on them. Anybody here glad that the Lord is working on you? Shout it out. The door is open. The door is open. Is he working on you? I said, is he working on you? That's why people don't want to come to church. Because you being a hypocrite. Like you all in that. And you at the same party with him. You was drinking the same cognac with him. But Gene. The door is open. He didn't give up on me. He didn't give up on me. Y'all excuse me, he didn't give up on me. I know I get rough sometimes, but I'm glad he got his hands on me. Is it anybody in here glad that the Lord has his hands on you? need a witness up in here you know the Lord has his hands on you I need somebody up in here who don't mind talking about what the Lord has done for you amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found but now I see Hey 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 The door is open The door is open Kind of late for baptism Crystal experience By letter if you're out of church Come give me your hand right now Get up, come on Come give me your hand but more importantly, give God your heart. Amen. God wants to work on you. Be patient with me. God, not do with me. Please. Please. Look at me. Be patient with Joe. God is not through with Joe yet. But I'm glad he's not through with you yet. Touch your neighbor and say, he's not through with me yet. If there's one person who's not a member of a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, come give me your hand, but more importantly, give God your heart. It is right to be in church. It is wrong to be out of church. God! Is that one today? Is that just one today? I don't care what you've done. God's able right now. I don't care. God's able right now. of a Bible believing Bible teaching church if you're not able to raise your hand what's hindering you from giving me your hand but more importantly giving the Lord your heart you can make your life brand new the Bible says in Christ I'm a new creature all things have passed away behold all things have become new if you got the faith he's got the power to change your life right now why don't you just stand and make your way today Bless you, bless you. There's room, yet none have come. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I done got happy today. Lord, have mercy. Bless you. We got to be patient with people. 
Raise your hand. 